Hello, thank you for stopping by. My name is Becky and this is Bex Reads and today I'm here to share with you my weekly reads from April 15th through the 28th. She looked at a calendar everybody, good job me. I am actually filming this on Thursday the 25th because I do leave for a polycon tomorrow and I will not be back until late on Sunday. So I don't see myself finishing any more books within the weekend. So I'm just lumping it all in. And I may actually even be done for the month because when I get back, I'm only gonna have two days left in the month. I'm gonna wanna film my wrap up. I'm gonna wanna film a book haul. I'm gonna wanna like work on my vlogs that I'm putting together for a polygon. So I may be done. <laughs> But let's talk about the four books that I have finished in the last two weeks. So first off, I finished Voyager by Diana Gebeldon. This is book three in the Outlander series. I am rereading this with Jen at the Book Refuge for her Outlander read-along. This has always been my favorite of the Outlander series. So in this, it has been at least 20 years since the last book. So we are following Claire as she is now in her normal time period, 1960, 19, I think 1960. We're going to go with 1960. She is in her own time period. She has a grown adult daughter and they are back in Scotland and she is trying to find out what happened to Jamie in the time since she came back to her time period. So we follow these two timelines for a while where she is discovering some historical texts that say like snippets of what Jamie was experiencing and then we switch to Jamie's POV back in 17 something and we're seeing him experience the things that Claire is finding out and eventually they become reunited with one another and their story just explodes from there. So this still on reread, five stars. I loved everything about this book. I loved the dual timeline in the beginning of seeing how they meshed so well together. And I've always said that I like the moments when Jamie and Claire are together, but I didn't mind just getting Jamie's perspective. And I actually really enjoyed those moments of seeing what he was experiencing. Um, and usually that's not something that I say within these books because in later books I get really bored when Claire and Jamie aren't together. <laughs> so that was an anomaly here. I don't know if it was just what he was doing and experiencing or what, but it worked for me in this sense. We're also introduced to a few newer characters as you will see as the series goes on, you're constantly getting introduced to new characters. But we get introduced to young Ian and Marsalis in this and I love those two characters. Um, they are younger. I think they're both in their teens. And again, usually that would annoy me. But I really loved their personalities in this story. And I can't wait to see their story evolve now that I know where it's going. I'm, I'm enjoying these two characters much more. At one point in this story, they do end up on a ship traveling to Barbados, I believe it is. And it, you all know by now, I love the seafaring adventures. Um, and I loved that setting as well, seeing how Jamie is seasick. He's always seasick. <laughs> and so seeing him experience the sea once again, it's just fun for me. So I loved so much of this. This is still by far my favorite of the series that I've reread. And I'm hoping that I get to discuss it with Jen and whoever else is on the live show for it. I missed the last one because I didn't get it read in time, but I'm hoping that I will get to be a part of that live show discussion as well. So yeah, another win for this. I then finished reading my Black Hat Book Coven pick for this month, which is The House Witch by Della Moth. And I'm not going to go too far in depth of my feelings on this because we will be doing a live show on April 30th. So... I will have that live link down below if you want to go set a reminder for it. But this is the story of Finn, who is a cook. He takes this job as the royal cook, and he's trying to hide the fact that he is a witch, but he's not very good at it. Pretty much everybody around him knows or finds out really easily that he is a witch. But he's trying to hide it because... 
witches still aren't really accepted within this world. Um, they're sort of seen as outcasts. And he doesn't have the most useful of powers. He is a house witch. So essentially, anywhere that he considers his home, he is able to protect. But aside from that, like outside of his home, his powers are pretty, pretty useless. And it's just his story of trying to hide his witchcraft while also forming relationships very reluctantly because he is a bit of a grump um, and he doesn't want to build those strong ties, but he just can't help himself. He is a very nurturing person by the nature of his ability. And so he takes care of the people around him. And in doing so, he forms this found family with everybody he works with and the royal family in here. This book, I will say, is very character driven. It does not have a very strong plot. It's it's 460 pages. This looks thicker than it actually is, but it did take me a while to get through it. And that's not because I didn't like it, because I did. I enjoyed this book. I enjoyed the atmosphere of it. I enjoyed the found family of it. I loved the character dynamics, but if you read this, just go in knowing that it is a cozy fantasy and you're not going to get a very strong plot. There are threads of like things that potentially might happen in future books, but they're pretty dropped. Like some of the plots of bigger things to come, they sort of just get forgotten within the story for the sake of the characters and their interactions with one another and what they're experiencing. That's all I'm going to say. I did enjoy this and I will share more of my thoughts on that on the live. I then finally got my audio hold for Two Twisted Crowns by Rachel Gillig. So I completed this duology. Go me for finishing a duology this year. Yay. This is book two in the Shepherd King series. So I absolutely loved the first book, One Dark Window. And in this one, we are following Elspeth and Raven. They are on a mission to find the last card that they need to combine them all to get rid of this mist, this blight that is part of their territory. The only problem is the only person who knows where the last card is that they need, which is the Twin Alders card, is the nightmare within Elspeth's head. So this nightmare takes control of Elspeth's body as he is trying to very reluctantly share where this card is to get rid of the blight within this territory. And then we also get more of Elm and Ione's story as well and their budding relationship within this story. So I liked this one. I did not like it as much as the first book because in the first book I got really connected to Elspeth and Raven. And in this book they almost become the side characters of the story. I feel like Elm and Ione really took the focus of it and because I wasn't as connected to their characters I wasn't as invested at, in what was going on. However, I still loved the vibes of this story. I still felt the atmosphere within it. I really liked getting more insight into the nightmare's past and why he is the way he is. I really like the magic, this tarot card magic. It just gets further in depth within the story. I did like getting more from the other characters' perspectives, especially Ione, because she almost has this, like, nightmare of her own. Not, not like, an entity, but she has touched the Maiden card. So that's given her a lot of beauty, but it's taken away a lot of her feelings. And so we get to see her experience not having the strong emotions that she wishes she, she did and seeing how she goes about like still caring about people without these emotions and how she ties into helping get these cards. I still really enjoyed this duology. I did not give this a low rating by any means, um, but I feel like because Elspeth and Raven weren't at the center of it, that did hinder my enjoyment just a tad. Solid duology, highly recommend. It's such a unique fantasy romance with just a little dash of romance. Again, this had like one pepper worth of spice in it, not between Elspeth and Raven. Um, but if you're looking for a fantasy romance that leans more fantasy than romance, I think you should definitely check out this series because it's very unique and I think it stands out amongst everything else out there. 
And the last book that I finished reading is one that I had no intention of actually reading, but the audio was available on Libby, so I figured I might as well read it. And that is The Boy with the Bookstore by Sarah Etcheverry Smith. I hate this cover. The only reason I bought this book is because I was at an indie bookstore and they had a very small designated romance section. And these were the kind of romances that they had in their selection. And I wanted to, you know, encourage them to continue building that romance section and give them my money for the sake of that. So I picked up the romance that I liked the cover the most. And that's saying something because I hate this cover. So in this, we are following Josie and Max. Josie owns a bakery and Max owns a bookstore. Right next to each other, they are at least under the same like building management or whatever. And they have been attracted to each other since they first like became aware that they work next to each other. The only problem is it's taken them forever to ask each other out or whatnot. So one day they get the notice that their separate stores are being um, renovated. So they have to move into a shared space, a much smaller space. So forced proximity. And it forces them to spend time with one another, get to know each other, and confront their attraction for one another. This, this was fine. I liked some moments of it. It is a dual cast narrated audiobook, which I appreciated. I felt like Josie's character, she was relatable in some sense. She's in her 30s. She's never really had a too serious of a relationship. And she's kind of awkward. Like, their first encounter where she's attempting to, like, ask him out, she starts talking about how to get marrow from bones and licking and sucking and all that. And she's just mortified. And, girl, I understand. <laughs> That would probably be something that I would say to somebody as well. I remember walking somewhere. I was with my sister and these guys were like, enjoy your walk. And I was like, you too. They, they, weren't, they weren't walking anywhere. So <laughs> I understand the awkwardness of like just saying shit. But she was also kind of an annoying character because she's that kind of character where she's obviously attractive. She's short, she's curvy, she's got luscious, wide, long hair and pouty lips, and she wears glasses. So therefore, she doesn't think that she is Max's type, that he would never be attracted to her. And I just don't love that personality trait. I'm just like, you're obviously attractive based on your description. But you, like, sell yourself short, you degrade yourself, and I just, I just don't love it. I don't love it. I like a confident character, or at least one that you might have flaws, but you just roll with it, you know? This man, on the other hand, he is, like, the perfect man. He owns a bookstore. He's tall, with dark hair. He loves animals. He is a cat dad, which was really cute. Um, he also has, he's also a dog dad, I believe. So it's super cute there. Um, he's polite. He treats women with respect and all that jazz. And her family just loves him and adores him. So, you know, he seems like the ideal man. Okay. Um, so I liked the whole forced proximity bookstore owner, uh, bakery owner type situation. I liked the family dynamics that Josie has because she also lives with her family. Um, and that's something that you don't see in books really is like multi-generational families living together and doing it well and wanting to do it. Um, I really liked that aspect in here and they're doing it for a certain reason, but you know, it was nice to see that dynamic. But these two also have a very hot and cold relationship. One minute, they are hot and heavy for each other. They're complimenting each other. They're helping each other. And then he will say something or she will say something or something will go wrong and they will argue about it. And then two chapters later, they're back to being polite with one another. And then one of them will say or do something, smallest things, and it'll be a big thing worth arguing over. And then they'll be all pouty because, oh, I didn't mean to say that to him. And how will they ever forgive me? And blah, blah, blah. And then two chapters later, they're back. And then another two chapters. And it just got really freaking annoying to read about because these characters are in their 30s. Like, 
come on now. Get your shit together. Communicate better. And let's not have these petty little arguments just for petty sake. Because they were rather stupid. Like in one, she has a hamster and it gets out of the cage and it eats through some of his super expensive books, okay? So he fucking blows up about it. She offers to pay him for those books that her hamster destroyed or whatnot. And he's just like, you don't understand. So it's like, she's she's trying to solve the problem. You're a bookstore owner. It's not like you have emotional connection to these things. Why the fuck are you making this such a big deal? He is estranged from his mother. And so when that's brought up, she's like, well, have you ever considered um, talking to your mother or forgiving her? And he's just like, ah, Josie, just stop talking. You wouldn't understand. And I'm like, oh my fucking God. It's not like she told you you had to. She asked you a damn question. <laughs> like, this man would be perfect if it wasn't for his fucking attitude. His attitude is what pissed me off the most about him. Is he would just get irritated and fly off the seat for the stupidest, minor things that just... I got so tired of it. I'm like, y'all are going to end up married by the end of this book, but I can tell you what, you're going to last for maybe 10 years and she's going to get tired of your bullshit and y'all are going to end up divorced because your petty squabbles are going to get grating, let me tell you. Um, so this was an okay book. It wasn't anything spectacular. I got really, really annoyed with the relationship dynamics because that was what was furthering the plot within this story. And it had a very cliche epilogue. So it, it was a read. That's what I read. <laughs> Those were the four books that I finished in the last two weeks. Let me know down in the comments. Have you read any of these? What your thoughts are? Let me know what you've finished recently. But if you don't want to comment that but would like to let me know that you made it to the end of this vlog, could you leave me a leave me a broom emoji for the house witch. And with that, thank you so much for watching and until my next video, happy reading. Bye.